This program has been made possible in part by We're here today with Courtney Kelly and Kate Osborne, knitwear designers and authors of the new book, Vintage Modern Knits. Welcome, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. And you've got a really cool, unusual technique to show. Yes. Yeah, so Roy Stude is an Estonian inlay technique where as you're knitting, you actually wrap the yarn, a contrast color yarn, around the knit stitches, and it creates an embroidery while you're knitting the fabric. So there's really no finishing except weaving and ends once you're done. And unlike Fair Isle, you can have isolated motifs mm -hmm. on the design. You can see these two hats here feature just one isolated motif on the hat. But unlike Intarsia, you actually never knit with these contrast colors. They're just wrapped. Wow. And so, yeah, it's pretty neat. And what some a fun technique. Some people find embroidery to be a little hard, especially on a knitted fabric, because you have to it's make sure. It's always moving, and yeah, you know, the fabric is so stretchy. Um, but with this, because you're doing it while you're on the needles, you don't really have to worry about that, and the needles provide the tension for mm -hmm. you. They provide a little bit of structure and support for yeah. the work as you're wrapping the stitches. Really yeah. cool. So let's get started. And if you want to follow along, the hat on the right is the project on the web. Yep. Um, so what we're um, working with today, we have a sport weight yarn um, mm -hmm. that is an alpaca blend. And the yarn that we're actually going to be using to wrap the stitches is the same yarn as the base of the hat, but we've doubled it. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do here is take, I pull from the outside of the ball and the inside of the ball. And as you're working this, just like with intarsia, you don't really need to carry a whole ball around mm -hmm. with you. Um, and I just make a quick butterfly. A little figure eight. A little yeah. figure eight with my yarn. And you really don't need a lot. Maybe 10 or 20 yards of each color. Um, and then as you need more, you can always mm -hmm. just make a little bit more. So we're going to start here with row one. And this is going to set up um, our motif. Um, we start out by knitting to here. And you can see these green squares on the key. It says Roystude inlay with two strands of contrast color one. So you're not actually knitting these stitches with contrast color one. Mm -hmm. They're just being wrapped. So what Show we're going to do is like. we we're going to just knit one. And then I take my contrast color. And just like adding any color, you're going to leave a little bit of a tail. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to bring those two strands forward between the needles and let them hang there. And then I'm going to knit these two stitches that are represented as green. But with your main color. But with the main color. And then I'm going to bring these two strands back between the needles. And as you can see, I just oh, wow. wrapped the stitches mm -hmm. with them. The next two are plain knit with the main color. And it's important, you can see what Courtney's doing, how when she's knitting, she's carrying the main color yarn over those wraps. Right. That's what kind of holds it in place. Mm -hmm. It locks it kinda in. Locks those, you don't yeah. have to worry about it popping off the needle once you're knitting around. Exactly. So Creates then, the inlay effect. Mm -hmm. Bring this forward again. Just show it one more time. This is five stitches. Is there any special way you tension the yarn? Or? You want to keep it fairly loose. Mm -hmm. um, it can create puckering if you let it pull very tight. You see how much it moves those over. So you do want to let it lay very loosely. Mm -hmm. um, and you can always tighten it up afterwards. So it gives you a lot of room to move. So yeah. the second round here, you have to do something a little bit different. Because now your yarn, um, your contrast color is on the wrong side as you come back around. Oh, I see. Yeah, so yeah. Once, once you've knit this first round, because you started on the right and you moved to the left, just like you would with an intarsia chart or a fair isle chart, you have this contrast color hanging out on the left side of the work. Mm -hmm. And you can see here, we have this first round worked We're using a different color, the green, the two, five, the two. And then this little marker delineates the start of the chart. Otherwise, you're just knitting all the way around. Mm -hmm. So you work a little bit, and then you get a nice little break. So then I have 
11 stitches. So I just knit those normally following the chart. So, uh, and you can use this technique on any kind of accessory or mm -hmm. knitted sweater. It's typically done on, um, it was originally done on socks and mittens. Mm -hmm. Small but was, projects. Yeah, yeah, but it would be super cute on a sweater, like Great. a little medallion. Yeah. So I have my yarn on the left, and what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna bring it forward and then put it in the back. Oh and wow. It, yeah, so it creates, we call it a floppy loop. We tried to we find We tried a, to find a more elegant <laughs> way to say it, but we, we just, just have no it. other way. <laughs> Maybe in Estonian, there's a beautiful word. Um, <laughs> So I have my yarn in the back. I'm going to knit these two stitches. One, two. And this is your first inlay on the second yep, row, right? Yeah, right here. The, and then I'm going to flip it to the back. Mm -hmm. So I've created my inlay that way. So you're using the loop that you've created as your working yarn. All I, the way so that's across. why there's so much slack Yeah, that's it. why. Mm -hmm. And it can be as floppy as you want it to be. The floppier, the better. Because like, like I said before, you can always tighten it up mm -hmm. by turning the work to the wrong side and just gently pulling it. Pulling it. And then once I've worked this row all the way across, just doing what I'm doing, back and forth, back and forth. You can see, and you can even see if your loop isn't floppy enough, you can just give it a little tug because mm -hmm. it's just tucked in there. So this is my last two stitches. And then I'm putting it to the back. And then I have these stitches which I knit around. Well, so let's, um, let's lay that flat so that everybody can see kind of what the effect what, is there. So if you tuck it in, you can see I've created this round here with these stitches. That's gorgeous, what a fun new yeah. way to incorporate some color. And then you just pull that, your floppy loop, pull the remainder, you have a nice texture. And one of the really exciting things about this is that you can use any colors you want for this inlay. The rules of Fair Isle don't really apply, so these three colors could be very, very close and you would still get a nice technique. How fun. Yeah. Thanks so Thank much, you guys. So much. Thank you.